Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our short video on the trend is your friend until it isn't. Now the trend is your friend is an old adage in the financial markets whether you're trading stocks or forex or cryptocurrency but the trend is your friend and understanding trends is very important. Now what else is important is that you subscribe to my channel. Please click down below and subscribe or click on the bell icon and we'll just send you a notification whenever I upload a new class. But that's all. We won't bother you with anything else. So please subscribe. Now, a trend is a very simple thing to explain. A trend exists whether it's in fashion, whether it's in color, whether it's in cars. You know, right now, most of the car dealers have done away with their sedans okay? because they're out of fashion. Pickup trucks are in fashion. SUVs are in fashion. Now, what does that mean? That we see a steady growth in one particular pattern. Okay? Maybe red cars are no longer selling and we're selling lots of black cars. Don't know why. Don't know, but we need to be aware that there is a trend in the overall movement of a market. Okay. Now, trends are really not rule-based. They are more about knowledge and seeing what is happening and looking at facts and figures. Okay. So as a trader, you've probably heard the old adage that it is best to trade with the trend. The trend is, says all the pundits, is your friend. This is sage advice as long as you know and can accept that a trend can end. And then the trend is not your friend anymore. So how can we determine the direction of the trend? And hence, I did not say trend line. We are going to talk about trend lines, but trend lines and trends are different. So when it comes to identifying a trend, it's an overall movement of the market. As I believe in the KISS rule, keep it simple. Now, it's important because if we can see a market moving in a particular direction, we can make some assumptions. Now, I live by the motto, or I trade by the motto, that the markets are completely random. They make no sense at all. They're all involved with lots of human beings making decisions and affecting price. But there are certain times when an asset will exhibit non-random movement. And in our line of business or our line of trading, that, that non-random movement can actually be defined as a trend. When doesn't mean a push up and then a price fall down, a push up and a price. It means a trend. Trends are either buyers entering the market and pushing price up or sellers entering the market and pushing prices down on a steady basis. Because when momentum starts, when the buyers start entering the, the markets, it's like, remember the hamster in the cage when you were a kid? That hamster would take a while to get that wheel turning, but once he'd get that wheel turning, it would turn, and turn, turn, and he would go for hours and hours and hours. Okay. And it was amazing. But as once it starts turning, it turns with a great deal of ease and it turns with conviction. When a market starts to trend, it takes a lot of work from traders and it's not likely going to just stop. It will peter out, but it, it, it's a force of nature that once the traders have begun to roll in one direction or another, that they will continue for a while. Now, the goal here is to determine the trend direction, not when to enter or exit a trade. Of course, this is not to say that there is no trading opportunities in a shorter term time frame, such as daily or hourly charts. But for those traders who want to trade with the trend rather than trading the correction, one could wait for the trend to resume and again trade in the direction of the trend. Okay. We need to be trading when the wheel is moving in our direction, not when the wheel is slowing down, when that wheel is getting to the point where it's got the, the maximum amount of motion. So it is easing automatically in that time. So even as it slows down and loses momentum, it's still moving in that direction. Now, 
the thing is, where do you actually look at the trend? If we're going to look at red cars versus black cars, are we going to only look at over the last six months or over the last month or the last year or the last two years? How can we make a decision that will be a valid decision in our case later today or tomorrow? So we have to have a way that we can look at trends environmentally. Then we have to be able to look at trends in a shorter term time frame. So in other words, if you surmised two years ago that red cars were starting to fall out of fashion and black cars were starting to get popular, you probably wrote you know, all the marketing materials and all the letters to the bosses and all the to keep an eye on this and be prepared. Okay, as we moved to an annual time frame and you saw that this trend was still in a shorter period valid, you might have said, okay, maybe it's time that we started cutting back on the production of red cars and be prepared to place our orders for more black paint starting in, you know, to arrive in three or four months and start increasing the inventory coming off the lines to black. So when the, the actual shift happens, we have the black cars to push out there. We're not sitting here with our competitors pumping out tons of black cars and we're sitting here with tons of red cars that are dying on our lot. So a trending market is one in which price is generally moving in one direction. Sure, price may go against the trend every now and then, but look at the longer time frames that show you where the retracements are. So let's pop up a chart here. We're going to go look at, this is my Euro US dollar chart. Now I happen to use this, this is my teaching chart. I use the same asset, same time frame. Now I did this right before I started talking and I was able to drop a beautiful in the yellow gold trend line. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking and not the yellow trend. I was able to find a trend in the, and it's in the gold. And you see push and ease, push and ease push and ease. Now this is on a 30 minute chart. So if we were to look at it in a shorter term time frame. We wouldn't be seeing, we're seeing a general movement up, but we don't really see a move up for the euro. We see a recovery of the euro, but not a move up for the euro. So maybe it, when we see this and we're looking back in a longer time, we don't say this is enough to start shifting our production from red cars to black cars. If we go back and look at it in a longer time frame, now look at that. We could see we definitely have a movement. So now we have an environmental move. Okay, We can see in this case, it's the Euro US dollar climbing. In the case of the cars, we see black cars sales climbing up steadily. Okay, we don't need to look at red cars declining because right now we're concerned with bringing enough black paint, including increasing the inventory of black. So here we're looking at black and we can see this beautiful environmental shift. So that's telling us we have a longer term committed shift. So in this case, would we want to consider buying the euro? Okay, well, we have a upward momentum. That momentum is continuing and it's got some strength. So we have a beautiful uptrend. Okay. So we could say we have some conviction in the Euro US dollar and we would expect it to climb higher than 117.47. Now that's a high climb. Now a lot of that, now we know if we environmentally look at it, a lot of that is tied to the huge package that was just dumped by the Eurozone for recovery. So that has supported the recovery of the euro. The dollar is down because of Trump and US economic situation. So we have some fundamental pieces helping us with the dollar. Now, we don't want to trade when environmentally the market is against us. So that's why the trend is our friend. Now, that's not making a trading decision. That's only just making a consideration. When we drop back down to a one hour chart, we also see something very pleasing there. Okay, so there I would also have the conviction that I would want to buy the euro. 
when we drop it down to a 30 minute chart. Now, I would say we most likely look at how the support of the trend line has helped it. The euro is moving up and recovering. I would be interested in executing a buy position today. Now, figuring out what price I would buy for it requires lots of other things. Okay, but I would definitely be considering a buy position. Okay, and looking for a signal. Now, it happens to be that just a couple hours ago, we got a very good crossover MACD and we got a strong buy position. And if I had been watching this, I would have probably bought at that point right here. Okay, now. I'm not telling you to go buy the euro. Don't misunderstand me. I'm looking at a hypothetical situation. But this is beautifully taking place on our live charts right now. So we've now assessed the trend. We have a very good understanding of multiple time frames. We have looked at the short-term trend, the long-term trend, and the intermediary term trend. And we have been able to make a good premise or a good argument to consider trading the euro dollar. But that's all we've done at this point. Okay. So at this point, the trend is our friend. Now, trends have some type of general, what we want to look at. When we looked at my gold line push, pushing up and easing down, because we look for a trend, a good trend has what we call high, higher highs and higher lows pushes and ease, peaks and valleys. And a good trend should go push up, ease, push up, ease, push up, ease, push up, ease. That's when the buyers in an uptrend have just tired out for a second. They haven't left the market. They've tired out for a second. And some buyers who bought earlier, who only, you know, their rule of trading is they want to make 32 pips. Well, they've made their 32 pips, so they've already, you know, setting their sales to take get out of the market. They've got the profit they made they don't want any more risk. Now, they could re-enter the euro in a second, but they want to book that profit. They're very content with what they got. So one of the best ways to put your trends and your trend lines together is what I call eyeballing price action. And you can make use of other technical tools you have learned in other classes. But there are three types of trends. We have uptrends, downtrends, and sideways trends. So we talked about trend length, the difference between long-term, short-term, and intermediary. Okay. We could use moving average to help support our decision. Okay. And trends, now I'm not a wave or cycle trader, but trends do come in waves. And there are rules about waves if you'd like to trade trends using A, B, C, and, a, and one, two, three waves. And there's pivots, okay? There's many ways that we can translate this into some type of interpretation. But by combining the moving average diagnosis with the pivot count, and then fine tuning the analysis with the observation of candle pound, a trader can stack the odds of making a successful trade in his or her favor. So one of the easiest and most reliable ways to make money for trading is to follow trends and let winning trades run for as long as they will. But then we have to start looking at the difference between trends and trend lines. Now, trend lines are rule-based. And I like trend lines because they give me a set of rules to draw my first line on my chart. Okay. And they're always drawn or mine are always drawn the same. Everybody's should be following the rules. That gives you a good starting point for then doing all the other things you want to do in chart because it gives you a basis that started out with a set of rules. Now, trend lines represent a charting technique, which is a line that is added to represent the trend of the currency pair. Drawing a trend line is as simple as drawing a straight line that follows a general trend. Trend lines can be used to identify trend reversals. Trend lines are a useful tool for visually highlighting a trend.
So the basic concept, understanding the basic concepts of price action is crucial because it applies to every trend we have. If trading with a trend, we want to see this type of movement, higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend, lower lows and lower highs for a downtrend. Because price charts produce noise. Noise is the small random movements that can make it so hard to spot a trend. So anytime that there are two highs or two lows, a trend line can be drawn. Now that sounds really easy and very subjective. Okay. But there's a last part to make that rule work. Is number one, a trend line is not valid until it has a third touch on that line and no price has broken that trend line. So you have to draw your lines correctly. Trend lines are not only based on price, but have a time element. Now, trend lines are continuously redrawn. Whenever price breaks that trend line, it's no longer valid, and we have to redraw it so the price is always over top of that trend line. And we need to do that third touch to make it valid. Until we have the third touch of the trend line, it is not a valid trend. And once price has broken that trend line, it is no longer a valid trend. So there are three very important keys to drawing effective trend lines. The higher time frames will always produce the more reliable trend lines. So start there and work your way down. Like we did, we looked at the four hour chart, the one hour chart to the 30 minute chart. Most trend lines you come across will have some overlap from the high and the low of a candle, but what's important is getting the most touch as possible without cutting through the body of a candle. Never try to force a trend line to fit. If it doesn't fit on the chart, it's not valid. So the goal of every trader is to buy low and sell high within a currency trend. Trend lines give us a way to identify the high and low ranges of a trend. If we are looking to buy a currency based on our fundamental view and it's pulling back to the up to the uptrend line, this gives us an area to buy the currency at a low price in the current trend or vice versa. So understanding trends and trend lines is the first crucial step in interpreting price action on your charts. And guess what? When you look at charts and you apply price action, you're applying technical analysis, basic, simple, technical analysis. You are looking at that price and interpreting it and understanding what it's trying to tell you. You start out with a general view, then you put on something with rules, and then you can work forward. So thank you very much for joining us today, and please watch and visit our other classes and our other videos. Have a great trading day. Bye now.